Solomon in all his glory. As King David, who was after God's own heart, loyal to him, represented the Christ in earthly trials, afflictions, and victories, so King Solomon typified the church glorified. Whereas King David's reign was full of wars, King Solomon had none. He was not only a prince of peace, but was a wise, rich king who builded the temple of Jehovah. King Solomon's fame spread abroad through the then civilized earth. The Queen of Sheba, who came to see for herself, declared that the half had never been told. Jesus referred to this visit of the Queen of Sheba, saying that she came from a great distance to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Thus she put to shame the people of Palestine, who disregarded the great teacher of superior wisdom, of greater than Solomon. Evidently our appreciation of values depends much upon the eye. So the eyes of our understanding must be opened before we can truly appreciate spiritual things. Thus Jesus said to his followers, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Already we see many of the inconsistencies of the past. No longer would a Roman Catholic Archbishop of Canterbury condemned to the flame Sir John Old Castle because of Episcopalian differences. Our eyes, both Catholic and Protestant, have opened and are still opening. What we evidently need is that the eyes of our understanding should be opened widely, that we might see the length and breadth, the height and depth of the love of God. God is pleased to open the eyes of only a small class at the present time, namely, that class which turns from sin and makes a full consecration to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Their eyes shall be opened that they may see the King in his beauty, even by the eye of faith, looking through the telescope of God's word, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, the followers of Jesus are changed into the same image, from glory to glory.